Hello and welcome to this introduction to the Le Monde through the Grand Tableau with myself, Marcus Katz. I'm the co-author with Tali Goodwin of the first mass market book in English to be produced on the Le Monde called Learning Le Monde, published by Llewellyn. And we're also the co-authors under our pen name of Andrea Green of the seven day Le Monde book which I'd highly recommend to go with this particular free class. This class is in two parts. I'm going to be introducing the Le Monde, talking about its history and a way of approaching it through the Grand Tableau. And then there's a members only um, extension to the video with bonus material on the houses, chaining, knighting and several other techniques to extend our reading a bit further. I'd very much encourage you to take a look at Seven Day Le Monde because it is our um, pulling together of a lot of the materials from our original research on the Le Monde deck. <clears throat> we originally um, uh, revived the Le Monde in the English speaking market because we needed two particular cards, the Rose or the Bouquet and the Key card for another project we were involved with um, almost a decade ago now. This particular book um, has the Philippe sheet, the dream symbolism, coffee cards, the coffee card verse, the game of hope, Arthur Edward Waite on the Nemond uh, via dream symbolism, um, a contemporary meaning, a functional meaning, and then a simple what you say, um, which in this case is the mountain card. It says the mountain is an obstruction if you want a literal um, reading from the straight symbolism and um, particularly if you're reading for yourself these what you say can get around any bias because it's exactly what the card says. I'll explain where these come from in a moment and then we'll take a look at the grand tableau. This is very suitable for beginners because um, I'm going to show you how to do a one card reading which I don't advise but I do advise it when you're doing it as a whole grand tableau. If you're after a kit version we have the Easy Lenormand which is a cut down version um, of Learning Lenormand and it also comes with a deck uh, which is called the French Cartomancy deck even though it's a German deck I think it's a Dondorf type deck. Um, within that kit form. So that's a very handy little kit form and um, the Tarot Association at the time of recording this has uh, just um, started to organise a re-licensing of the original Linamon cards from the uh, British Museum version and um, uh, we will have 100 licensed limited edition of the original Lenormand based on the Game of Hope that exists in the British Museum um, that Tolly and I um, recovered um, from original research by um, a professor, uh, the late professor, professor Hoffman. Um, that was um, reproduced um, as a little footnote about the Lenormand in um, uh, a book by Decker, Dumit and de Paulis a little while ago. So what we have here is a grand tableau with Lenormand cards. There are 36 Lenormand cards, but in this particular version of Lenormand, which is from Eugene Vinitsky, and it's the gorgeous golden Venetian Lenormand, um, it actually has 52 cards, and um, we're only using 36 of them. Um, I'll explain why that is in a moment. And I'm using a spread cloth by Shiro Marchetti, the other main Lenormand deck I use, other than the original Lenormand or some of the antique German Lenormand, is uh, Shiro Marchetti's Gilded Lenormand um, that Tolly Goodwin did extra research to um, suggest additional cards for that as well. And um, so that also, uh, one version of that does come with additional cards. The standard Lenormand deck comes with 36 cards and um, part of the reason for that is because it's based on a, a card game called the Game of Hope which exists in the British Museum. There's one in the Berlin Museum as well 
um, Berlin Library and I think the British Library, sorry, not the museum. Um, sorry, it is the British Museum. Um, and these 36 cards were laid out as a racetrack. So basically you started off in position one over here and then had to race by throwing dice until you got to position 35, not 36, which is the cross, which in this particular card game means suffering, but actually you got to the anchor, which is the symbol of hope, and therefore the game of hope, you had to land here. If you landed here, you had to go back several moves until you could throw the exact dice to get here. I suspect 36 cards is basically because you have two sets of dice, 6 times 6 is 36, it gives you enough of a track, and also in this particular layout we have four starting positions for four players, um, the sort of average family size. Um, I don't think there's much more to it than that. Similarly, um, I have my um, special wand here, so um, the card inserts we're not going to take a look at at all because I would recommend, particularly for beginners, that you study one of our cartomancy courses entirely separately and then um, study Le Monde entirely separately and then make up your own mind about the correspondence of uh, traditional cartomantic card meanings and the Le Monde cards themselves. My personal feeling is that they were thrown together very um, um, badly um, and without little meaning and little correspondence, but that is my personal opinion. I don't find the um, card inserts very useful, personally. I prefer to use the houses and chaining and so forth. That gives me more than enough information without trying to half-inch um, original cartomantic meanings from any particular source. Um, into the Le Monde. It doesn't seem consistent to me as far as we've yet discovered. So in this particular class we're going to look at a one card reading um, but we're actually going to use the whole grand tableau which is how I'd recommend you learn. Every time you lay out a um, Le Monde reading lay out a grand tableau even if you only read a few cards because it will get used uh, get you used to um, reading all of the cards as a set. <clears throat> so, why, the, why is the history of the cards important to our, our way of reading? Well, first of all, there is no singular tradition with the Lenormand, despite what a few um, bloggers or authors might say. Um, academically, historically, um, personally, I really don't believe that there is a singular tradition never mind a regional one, a language one, um, a date one, or any other um, ways in which we might actually define a tradition. There are different authors um, who have taken different approaches, some of which overlap and some of which are very different. Sometimes they are um, able to be compared or contrasted across regions, across um, certain times, but um, not always. Um, for our Learning Le Monde book, we looked at, we actually purchased um, a whole host of contemporary um, German um, and French, um, um, Spanish, um, several other languages of Le Monde um, interpretations. Um, by contemporary, I mean over the last 30 years. And then we also went back to the original sources as well. And we couldn't discern a, a singular tradition on any grounds. Having said that, <clears throat> as far as um, personally I'm concerned, uh, if we go back to dream symbolism, this is really the heart of the Le Monde. The original cards um, for what became known as the Le Monde were never used by Mademoiselle Le Monde herself. They were based on a card game by J.K. Hechtel, a German um, uh, owner um, and part of a family who owned um, brass um, manufacturing factories in um, uh, Germany. And basically, uh, he, um, as a sideline, produced games, as a lot of people in that area did at that time. And one of his games was the Game of Hope, that involved 36 cards. 
a very similar card game um, was around called the Coffee Cards. Uh, Mary Kay Greer discovered a reference to those in the British Museum. Tolly and I went to see that book as well um, <clears throat> a few years after the original Le Monde, um discoveries. And sure enough, that had a direct reference, the first evidence of a written record that these cards um, that were called the coffee cards were based on coffee ground uh, symbolism, the reading of coffee grounds. The reading of coffee grounds and tea leaves and sherbet and other methods of um, tassiography um, actually date back to um, standard dream symbolism. So in effect these cards called the Lenormand is a bit of a disservice because actually they are um, pictorial representations of a symbolic system that is based on our very earliest forms of oracles and divination which is dream symbolism itself. Why it was standardised as 36 is possibly because um, of the limitations of putting them on cards whereas with coffee cups you can have any um, number of symbols including the crown, the well, the bridge, all sorts of other symbols um, <clears throat> that became um, sort of standardised in terms of their interpretation. So Eugene's deck has um, 52 uh, cards. Um, he's developed um, a similar symbolism uh, using other uh, card semantic and um, symbolic sources. Uh, Shiro's deck has between four and eight extra cards, I believe, and um, so we're just using the standard uh, 36. So what we have here is Shiro's spread cloth um, um, with Eugene Vinitsky's Venetian Lenormand, golden Venetian Lenormand on top of them. So you get two, two decks for the price of one, really. Um, in terms of the positions, we've laid them out as 36 and they basically run from house number one, house number two, three, four, all the way down to 36 down here. And you'll have seen already, obviously, that the cards themselves provide the sort of significance of the house. So card one is house one, card two is house two, and so forth. So these produce um, a sort of context for the cards that fall into them, which is very useful when we're doing a one card reading. Okay, so um, the first thing to say is um, I've asked a specific question for this reading, which is um, produce me a reading that is good for um, demonstrating Lenormand reading techniques, skills and insights. I think it's very important to um, frame a question very specifically because um, we only have one symbol on each card. So, for example, the heart is just the heart. And while um, a particular deck may have um, other symbolism, the bridge, the hand, the canal and so forth, basically that is the heart card and it simply means the heart. The dog, the fox, the lady the sun, and so forth. Tarot cards are each metaphors, that is, each card is a, um, a set of symbols. So um, a tarot card, um, in combination with other cards, has a massive amount of interpretive uh, structure. Whereas with Lenormand cards, we literally read them very literally, and therefore um, we need other cards and a context in which to read them far more. So we've laid out a reading here and um, the first thing to do is um, not to panic that you've got so many cards um, in front of you, but to hone in on the um, sitter card. Now as time goes on and you get more experience, you may move around in a lot different order, which is one of the beauties of this reading and this method. But for now, let's just take a look at the sitter card. If the sitter is a, um, and I'm using the word sitter for client or querent, a friend, family member or stranger, um, is female, then uh, we use the lady card. And if the client is male, we use the male card. So first of all, we're going to identify um, the 
um, in effect the significator for that person. Sometimes the significator may be something else. For example, if they've asked about money, then we use the card um, for money in, and we hone in on that first. Perhaps we, we can work with that as we feel fit. And with a grand tableau reading, sometimes we go backwards and forwards, opening things up, closing things down, coming back to things as we read through it. So don't be afraid of that. And um, if that seems to be happening, then um, that's part of the natural process. You don't have to come up with the right answer straight away, although sometimes looking at the cards you can. So the first question to ask is, where is the sitter? in relationship to the whole grand tableau. And we can see here we have both the male card and the female card on the far right. Generally speaking, wherever the sitter is, um, it denotes the present moment from left to right. So all of this is in the past, going backwards behind them, and all of this is in the future, which is on the right hand side. So if we're asking for a female um, sitter, then basically everything to their right is their future and everything over here is their past. So what does that tell us straight away? Well, in this case, it tells us that, they're, that they brought a lot of their past to the situation that they're asking about in the reading than their future. So this is not so much a fortune telling in terms of a long future ahead, but we need to address a lot of things in the past in order to move on to the future. And so the querent is likely um, attending the reading because they're naturally reaching the end of some uh, phase or cycle of their life and um, um, something new is about to start and this is why they're in, um, in for the reading. The other thing that we notice as well as moving across the um, columns and the rows that we have um, in the Grand Tableau, generally speaking, above has influence over the below. So if you're down at the bottom, everything is influencing you and you have not much control over it and have to work out how to respond to things. Whereas if you're above, you have a lot of responsibility for the things that are below you. And therefore, uh, the reading is about how you need to actively uh, manage and control the things that are under your influence. Another thing to say is that um, the relationships between the cards are very important. So when we um, do this reading, we're going to look at the distance between the cards as well. Uh, the reason for that is because originally in uh, the reading of Coffee Grounds, um, the distance in the cup um, from uh, one symbol to another had um, influence in terms of the reading. And so if the snake, coffee grounds or tea leaves that look like a snake were wrapped around the um, leaves or coffee grounds that look like the person, that was very bad because the snake was very close to you. Um, similarly, if the clouds or coffee grounds that look like clouds were very far away from you, then that was a lot better because the clouds represent confusion and uncertainty and so were a lot better further away from you. Um, some cards are better closer to you like the dog than further away. And that comes from the origins of this style of reading from coffee grounds themselves. So don't believe anyone who says um, that, you know, that it's a cartomantic technique of distance. It actually comes originally from um, tea leaf reading or coffee grounds reading. And it's made its way into this particular style of reading. OK, so we can immediately see then if we have a one card reading for a client who is a woman, we can basically say um, you're at the end of a particular phase of your life. You're looking ahead to something new that's just coming on the horizon. Um, um, there's a few things that influence you. You have control over a few other things and there's a lot of stuff in your past that um, needs closing off in some way or another. And that is a simple one card reading doesn't really tell us much or tell the client much. So um, let's extend that to doing a, a one card reading other than the client card itself. So this is a one card reading. So in this case, we would look at the one card to her right 
and that is the Sun. And the Sun is um, a very good card in Le Monde, so that basically means everything is going to be fine, everything is going to be sunny, everything is going to develop and grow, and um, there's going to be a lot of good luck, and you're going to be very fortunate. So if we were asking a general question about anything, the answer is yes, it's all going to be fine. Yes, it's all going to be fine. And that's it. And there we have our one card reading where we've just read this card in relationship to the sitter or the significator card. And that's it. There's a one card reading. Um, um, you know, we've been able to tell stuff about her past, the amount of influence that's on her. Um, she's in the bottom right hand corner so she's almost being shoved off the end of things but things are going to be okay and that's it as simple as that one card reading it's all going to be sunny sun ahead in effect we can be very literal and say woman sun ahead and that's it um, sometimes it can be very surprising you might say something like that and find out that the um, client hasn't told you that they're pregnant and you say woman sun ahead and you're actually predicting the um, birth of a baby boy, um, even even though it doesn't sound like it. So sometimes the Lindemann can be very literal. I always recommend reading the cards out loud, saying them out loud. For example, the ship, um, if we were talking about um, houses, so we might have sh the ship is, there we go, <laughs> the ship is anchored. The ship is anchored. There's the anchor symbol, the ship is anchored. And that's enough to tell you that um, you know you don't need um, um, a lot of courses or books to be able to interpret the ship is anchored. That means it's not going anywhere, but it is safe. So that might be then interpreted in terms of a question or situation. If we were to do another one card reading for the lady, um, she might ask about her money or her finances. Now, um, using... Um, a book like the Seven Day Le um, um operators are standing by to take your call in order to order the book. Um, then we would know that the money card is the fish, the resources. Um, back in the day, back in Hector's day, um, um, then um, you know the, uh, the fish were obviously a, a source of resource. So you know the more fish you had in the sea, the better. So we might say that her relationship to money is long past. So in effect, her money situation, um, she is maybe dragging some sort of financial commitment um, all the way to the present moment. And that's something that she's about to um, get rid of in order to move forwards. So it's about releasing a financial commitment um, that will be very positive, will release a lot of energy to her, whichever decision she makes. Again, um, without preempting the um, additional members only course, um, for those watching this free version, I can give you a hint with the houses to say if we look at the house that the fish are in, then it's the house of the ring. And the house of the ring, uh, the ring card is to do with commitment and possibly even marriage in this case. She is a married woman. Um, then a lot of her resources have been tied in the past to a long-term commitment, possibly taken at the time of marriage, and that is now coming to an end, and maybe she's looking to um, release that um, 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 money or new um, uh, capital forwards. Again, we, we need a context. We're not to play some sort of weird guessing game with Le Monde, although if you read for a stranger, as I do quite often um, when I do Grand Tableau readings for clients, sometimes I find myself giving, um, for me, terrifyingly uh, literal and everyday black and white interpretations, even if I don't know the client, to actually say you took on a financial commitment when you got married and blah, blah, blah. Um, without knowing any details about the client. And the, um, uh, one of the difficult things about Le Mon reading is being uh, courageous enough to read the cards literally um, as they stand without trying to um, uh, twist them. But it does really help if you have a question um, um, to, to put, put the whole thing into context. 
So hopefully that makes some sense that we are able to do a one card reading with the Grand Tableau. Um, if she was to ask about her relationships, then um, we would look at the heart card and then um, look at that as well. We might look at the distance um, between her and the heart. Um, we might look at the cards around the heart in order to do a little mini reading on her relationship. So um, let, let's actually do that so I can demonstrate how to expand out the reading. In our books quite often and our courses what we do is we look at one card with a set of cards around it and then do another card with a set of cards around it and teach people to uh, uh, read the sort of past and future um, the influencers down and um, what they have influence over and then we show them that all of those cards have been actually they're all segments of the same grand tableau and then it gets you into a really nice way of reading that you can actually section each bit out without being overwhelmed when you first look at it look at one card first expand around it learn to read sets of um, nine cards with the one card in the middle and then you've, you you know you can go straight from there to the grand tableau but always read from the grand tableau no matter whether you're reading one card or a few because it just gets you used to it and quite often you'll see things um, in it um, intuitively that you may not have seen if you just tried to draw out one card which is a little bit of a useless way of learning Le Monde in my opinion. So let's take a look at the relationship issue and um, read around that. So we have the heart card, we can see it's in her past so maybe she's moving away a little bit um, from her own emotional um, contentment. Um, she's on the same line as, as it, which is great. Now the guy has a bit of influence over her at the moment, so she's not feeling totally empowered in the relationship itself. In fact, we can see if we just um, read up here and across here to the heart, um, that we have the tree in the middle between these two and the tree is both health but also family and tradition deep roots and so on so it could be that they have a very or had a very traditional uh, marriage originally um, that's, that's sort of moved on a bit um, to this stage when we take a look at the heart then we can see the two cards in between are the dog and the fox this is without using houses so um, We'll cover that in the members only class. So the dog and the fox. So what that might tell us is what well, the fox is about self-sufficiency and the dog is about loyalty. So her um, current state with regard to her emotions are all to do with loyalty, um, tradition and self-sufficiency. And maybe she's moving on from that a little bit. Um, uh, maybe the relationship has developed to such a stage she wants to find her own uh, way forwards. We don't know about children in the relationship, but I would guess from this uh, picture that uh, maybe the child has just recently left um, home, gone off to college or university, and left the woman and the man re-evaluating their situation. Or maybe something's changed with the house. Um, again, uh, if we have the client there with us, we can um, inquire about that. But we can also tell if we look at the house and the child card, um, which of those two situations it may be. If I take a look at the child card, that's in the house of the tree, um, which is here. So perhaps, perhaps they've just had a child then, um, rather than um, maybe that's what's changed the situation a little bit. And if we have a look at the house, then that is in the house of the ship. Ha! Huh. Now that's really interesting because if you take a look at uh, Shiro's card, um, which is the ship, and Eugene's card, which has got, um, because it's based on Venice, the house has the boat underneath it, there's a nice bit of symbolism there um, showing that the house is on the move almost. So the house is in the house of the ship, that means they're moving house, or have been intending to move house for a while. Um, and so maybe they've had a child, maybe he's come into, um, um, I think by the looks of it then, he, it was his house or his family's house and now they've had a child and they're looking to move away from it. 
In fact, again, you see, this is where it goes with the Grand Tableau. You try and read one card, but you end up reading a lot because you can make sense of it better that way. Take a look here. In front of him, we have the coffin card, and that is in the house of the coffin. It's really powerful when that happens, a card in its own house. The coffin in the house of the coffin means a dead stop, a sudden ending. He is facing a very radical um, change. She's looking to, you know, openness and stuff. At least they're equal in their um, progression. They're sort of hand in hand with that. But for him, it's the end of an era. For her, it's something opening up. And so there's some conflict in the traditional relationship and values between them as they face that forwards. So um, again, I'm cheating a little bit um, in giving um, the free class a bit more information um, than we're reserving for the special uh, members class. But you can see in the house, and um, she's in the house of the mice, so there, there are these warriors niggling um, below her um, and so forth. So we have the heart here. We can see that something shifted, that um, most of the relationship is about her self-sufficiency and loyalty um, and we can see perhaps that that's to do with the house move and the child um, within the situation itself. She's looking forward to a far uh, brighter future than he is. He's got to face a lot of things in order to move forwards. Um, <clears throat> so when we look at the heart card then and look at the cards around it, we can ignore everything else for the time being and see that the heart has influence over the tower. The tower is to do with bureaucracy, big business and organisations. So um, in terms of the, again, the traditional um, values that are at work um, and any um, sort of paperwork, any sort of um, uh, legal aspects to the relationship, um, the heart has influence over those. So maybe they're sort of renegotiating the terms of their original relationship. The lily here is to do, in this context for me, to do with purity and age. So again, there's a sort of sideways future influence in terms of being able to um, almost embrace a new future, a new age, um, a new maturity going forwards um, with the relationship itself. In the past, we have the stork. Um, um, in terms of its influence and there we see this whole returning issue so um, and that is in the line of the house here so we can see it's very important that the relationship moves on and has direct influence they're aware of not going backwards not returning back to an original home or situation the keys interestingly enough are in the past so therefore, we can almost see that image as being an open and closed door um, moving forwards. So they need to move to a, um, a situation where we have um, um, the sun here. Um, is that right? Um, yeah, so basically um, we have the scythe here. So um, things... Um, let me just um, take a look at that. Um, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Um, so the scythe here is um, a, a timing card. And so, um, again, it, it repeats this idea that there's been a whole sort of timing thing that they've been waiting perhaps for a particular time. The time has moved on and now that's had a direct influence on the relationship. So it's external forces, a natural transition of time, i.e. moving house, having a child, um, that is taking things forwards and that has direct influence on the relationship itself and so forth. So we can see how we can read round the cards um, in that sort of way. Now, when we take a look at um, um, the houses, um, then that provides us a lot more information um, as we go along. Um, I'm just trying to do, just double check that um, that card 22. Um, yes, yeah, you see, this looks like the sun, but of course, uh, this is the sun. This is the way is um, obviously he's trying to find his way through the canals of Venice. Um, so the ways is about choices and decisions, and that's 
um, from the anchor of the past. The timing issue has come along and now they've got to make some decisions and those decisions again are being forced on them in terms of the relationship from a long period of stability. Um, the time has now come to um, make their own way, choose different ways forwards and that is putting pressure on the relationship itself. Have to close that door properly. Um, um, almost strengthen the friendship going forwards in, in facing these ways together um, and embracing a slightly new phase of their own lives in that relationship as well. So we read those cards down and like this. We can see that the anchor, the door and the stalk are all closing off behind them. So we can read those up and down and we can read those across in terms of period of stability. The time has come to change your ways. So having been anchored, the scythe has cut and you must choose your ways. That's literally reading the meanings of the cards. Anchor, scythe, cutting, ways and then returning. Um, to old established things, new time of life, purity, age, and so forth. Um, not going back that way, but going back this and uh, going forwards this way. So we can see that's all around the heart, and the heart is in the garden. Um, so that means more networking, more meeting other people, making new friends, maybe a new area, and making new friends in a new area um, as a new phase of their life. So interesting enough, the couple um, are by the tree, which is great, um, and assuming he can face um, this ending to something that's been very strong in his life, which has influence on her, then she can move forwards as well. If we chose, for example, she wanted to take on a new course um, in the midst of all of this, then we would look at the book and we would read the cards around that. Um, look at the distance and the relationships and the houses and so forth and there we go with any particular um, way of doing a simple one card reading um, if we wanted to ask about she had problems with um, some um, bureaucracy or some I don't know um, uh, grant or something like that some financial issue then we might look at the fish we might look at the tower and then read these cards around and now the heart is actually above the tower and it has a new context in terms of um, um, officialdom, a grant, problems, a, a big organisation, maybe a healthcare provider or something um, would all be read from this card and then the cards around it, past, future, influence upon, influence on um, and then we would read this section um, having sort of um, scrapped um, um, the interpretations from reading it around the heart so that we would then read this section in a slightly different way looking at it from lots of different angles. So I hope that's given you a lot of inspiration and some ideas for how to start reading and approaching um, Lenormand. It's a very great literal system and in a moment I'm going to be recording the second part of this for members only I would encourage you to um, support our work and our research and our books and so forth, which will tend to end up costing us money rather than um, bringing in any, um, in order to um, uh, further that, uh, your support as a member of the Tarot Association at tarotassociation.net is greatly appreciated. And I hope you can see that we base this on years of experience reading and also practical methods, things that I know work because I do them as a living and also um, from our research for the books um, from an academic perspective as well. So thanks a lot for your time and attention. Um, I'll give you one question which is um, if you were to um, be asked by this person, I'm having problems with my boss throughout this change of house and a uh, child and everything else, um, what card might you look at to do a one card reading? Because the person has come to you to say, my main problem is I'm having issues with my boss. What might those issues be? And um, what might she be able to do about it? Um, and all of that can be seen in this reading from uh, one card and its position in the reading itself. Okay, um, 
uh, any answers if you want to share that on social media um, then um, be happy to see you in the tarot professionals group on facebook or the learning lenamon group on facebook as well thanks a lot